Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play on Formula 1 97. Steady Leela, steady. Anyway, we move on to round 3 of the championship now. This is the Argentine Grand Prix from Buenos Aires. Okay, it's time to watch the cars go around now in the qualifying session. And while we do, let's get a forward for this game from the legend himself, Mr. Murray Walker. Hello and welcome to Formula 1 97. It's sometimes too simple to talk about an F1 season in terms of increased competition among the top teams, but the 1997 season promised just that. Pre-season testing saw most of the teams, especially Williams, Ferrari, Benetton and McLaren showing marked speed increases. This meant that 1997 shaped up as the season where the technical supremacy of the Williams team would finally face a serious and concerted challenge. But even with the gauntlet held down in front of the new Williams pairing of Jacques Villeneuve and Heinz Harold Frentzen, my money stayed on the talented Canadian for the World Championship. A second subject that provoked a lot of discussion was the impending tyre war between Goodyear and Bridgestone. For the first time in five years, Goodyear's monopoly came under threat from the Japanese giant Bridgestone. This development certainly promised to add a further air of excitement to a sport that some people had suggested was becoming a little too predictable. Pre-season trials put the Bridgestone tyres way ahead in wet conditions and some big upsets were certainly on the cards. Prost, Arrows, Stewart and Minardi were all teams that would benefit from a downpour during racing. Combined with Damon Hill's enforced move to a restructured and freshly motivated Arrows team, and the return of F1 legends Jackie Stewart and Alain Prost as prime movers in their own teams, this new development made the 1997 Formula 1 season a very exciting prospect indeed. Formula 1 97 for the PlayStation reflects all of these close season changes. New team and driver combinations are included, as is the newly revamped and renamed Austrian Grand Prix track, the A1 Ring. Take your pick from the 11 teams, 22 drivers and 18 circuits of the 1997 season before tucking into the slipstream of Formula 1's top drivers in arcade mode. Or get to know the tricks of the track with a pre-race tutorial in a challenging Grand Prix mode. Whichever way you choose, the split screen feature lets you race head to head with a human opponent. Once the racing is underway, a host of new features bear witness to bizarre creations, unbelievable dedication to detail. Revamped cockpit views and styling reflect your choice of team and driver, while dials and digitals are shown as on-screen readouts. Make the smallest driving error and car damage will be shown in a series of stunning effects. Flames, choking smoke, burst pistons and oil sprays all point to an early exit, whereas a buckled suspension or damaged tyre may force you into an unscheduled pit stop. Fortunately, in Formula 197, the pit crew are just a radio link away from any necessary repairs. So, unless I'm very much mistaken, all that remains is for you to take your plate on the starting grid in one of the most up-to-date and accurate F1 racing experiences available anywhere. Good luck and enjoy the game, Murray Walker. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Murray. That was absolutely epic. And here we are at Buenos Aires with our driver of choice, Mr. Gabriel Tarqui, of course, just going around the circuit. Now, of course, because we're in the Jordan, we're not expecting to do very well. And unfortunately, Buenos Aires is a very, very complicated and difficult track to set the car up with. Yes, very, very complicated indeed, as we just go underneath the Foster sign, which has changed. Uh, after they took the game from release for a few weeks and changed it to faster. Yes, because Foster's had a little bit of a, a, a disagreement because they hadn't dotted their I's and crossed their T's apparently in getting their, any of their sponsorship money. Yes, so unfortunately they had to change that to faster instead of Foster's. Anyway, we move on. Just going around this very, very complicated section of the Argentine circuit. And we'll see what time at the moment. George Russell is currently in the lead. But we're going to come in now because I think we've done our first qualifying run. We'll see where we end up. We are on low fuel. Oh, oh my goodness. Dark Queen has gone straight into the pit building there. Wowzers didn't expect to do that. Really didn't expect him to do that. So, um, oh, and unfortunately, because of that, he's got to come round again. Oh, I hope he doesn't run out of fuel. I hope he doesn't run out of fuel. But yes, because he hit the uh, building there, he hasn't actually activated the pit which does happen a few times in this game, which means that uh, he's got to go around again. 
Oh my goodness, that was a fundamental error there from Gabriel Tarquini, but obviously his unfamiliarity with this circuit was probably to blame there. Yes, so here we go then. This is the Argentine Grand Prix circuit for the 1997 Round 3 of the Championship. And uh, yes, uh, I really don't like it very much, and Gabriel doesn't seem to like it because he can't even see where he's going half the time and misses the pit entrance. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just... It's all twists and turns and there's not really any sort of long straights that you can sort of uh, put your foot down and really go for it. So yeah, it's not a track that I'm particularly fond of. Anyway, hopefully now Gabriel's not going to run out of fuel. We hope so, otherwise it's going to be game over and he'll probably start in last place. Come on, Gabriel. He's actually been feathering off the throttle. You can't actually hear it because uh, I've got the sound turned down for the game but uh, yes he's been feathering the throttle to try and get round and hope yes he does he gets into the pits this time well done Gabriel so George Russell I do believe is currently in pole position at the moment as we just change onto our slicks and onto our new front wing because of course we did damage there when he hit the pit building <laughs> Gabriel so as we just accelerate through the qualifying as you can see George Russell is currently in the lead race drivers in second place and Turunga Leela has just gone into second place wowza did you see that Turunga Leela has gone into second position uh, race drivers in third Carmen George is in fourth place and we're still in fifth at the moment wowzers absolute wowzers OK, let's accelerate forward now, later into qualifying. As you can see, it has indeed started to rain. So we can't go out again because it won't be any point because we won't get a faster timing. So it looks like we're going to finish in ninth position for the race. George Russell at the moment is in the lead. Robert Kubica, of course, his Williams teammate, is currently in second place. And Turunga Leela in the fellow Jordan car is currently in third position now. Yes, third position Wowzers, she's really turned out to be a qualifying queen. Yes, a qualifying queen is Taranga Leela in that sister Jordan. Sebastian Vettel in fourth at the moment. Regina Hertz in fifth place and of course a Prost car. Race driver in the McLaren is in sixth position. Carlos Sainz is in eighth. We're in ninth position and Daniel Ricciardo is in tenth place. Wowzers, that's what I can say. Wowzers. So there's just... Uh, Five and a half minutes almost of qualifying left now. And of course, we can't go out because, as I say, it's raining, so there'll be little point. So we are going to start the race in ninth place. So here are the final scores on the doors. George Russell got first, Robert Kubica second, Turunga Leela got third place, Sebastian Vettel in fourth, Regina Hertz in fifth, Hill Race Driver in sixth position. OK, it's over now to the legendary Mr. Murray Walker. Welcome to Buenos Aires and the Autodromo Oscar Alfredo Galvez for this year's Argentine Grand Prix. Neither the drivers nor the teams particularly like the track. They find it difficult to get to grips with its narrow, twisty 2.6 miles. This was highlighted last year when there were several accidents. OK, so as always, the excitement is mounting as Gabriel Tarquini for round three of the championship as he just checks his steering there from the Argentine Grand Prix at Buenos Aires as the lights go out and we say go, go, go and it's away he goes from ninth place when well, he gets off to a fairly decent start didn't lose any positions as we go into this torturous right-hander into turn one oh, did you, just, did you just see that the Prost pulled out oh, there's contact there's contact with the Prost in front and he's damaged his front wing yes, you can see damage to his front wing the sort of left-hand side has gone a little bit wonky but he's OK the wing's still on he goes for a move on the Prost car but he completely cocks that up and out breaks himself and he's down to 10th place now Gabriel Tarquini on lap one is down to 10th place wowzers absolute wowzers there was quite a bit of audacious trying for overtakes there from Gabriel Tarquini didn't quite pull it off but as I say he is in 10th place so he's he's not too far behind and luckily he hasn't got to come in for a wing change on lap one so we continue on as you can see trying to chase the car in front as we go underneath the faster signs once again this is a very very tight right hand a very very tight indeed now in to this chicane 
We're chasing the car in front. I can't quite see who that car is because it's just a black blob at the moment due to the absolutely awesomeness of the PlayStation 1 graphical engine. Yes, absolutely awesomeness. So we go down into this. Now this store dips down into a hill. Then you go into a tight right. And oh my goodness. You can also feel sometimes that the steering goes light as you go down that little hill bit there. And if you press on the brakes too hard, you actually can spin out at that corner there. Absolutely fantastic attention to detail once again from those uh, chaps at Bizarre Creations. So we complete lap one now of this 20 lap Grand Prix and we're still in 10th place now for Gabrielle Tarquini. Oh, it's like, oh no, I don't believe it. That's Turunga Lila. It looks like she's had a coming together with the car in front, which I do believe may have been one of the cross cars of Eva, Regina Hertz, or Carmen Joyla. So it looks like, oh, and as I say that now, the Salba gets past uh, Gabrielle Tarquini. He's down to 11th place now. So yes, it looks like Turunga Lila has had a coming together with Eva, Regina Hertz, or Carmen Joyla. It looks like all the girls have got their panties in a bunch there. And uh, Turunga Lila is now down, down, down out of the points. Yes, down out of the points because she's only just ahead of us now I think in ninth place which is where Gabrielle Tarquini started from so the Salba gets past Tarquini now he's now down to 11th position on lap two but can we gain any ground now of course we have gone for a one-stop strategy because we're in ninth place so we've only got a pit uh, once in this race hopefully most of the other cars will pit twice so that will give us the advantage but of course in these early laps the fuel weight means everything so the car is very very heavy indeed very very heavy but as we get to lap seven the car will suddenly go light and it'll be like a rocket ship absolute rocket ship they really made a fantastic job of the fuel weight in this car anyway let's have a look at the positions Cuba Kill in first place, Sebastian Vettel in second, George Russell in third, Carmen Jorda in fourth position. Wowzers, absolute wowzers. And the car ahead of us is Antonio Giovinazzi, of course, in the Sauber car. And he's two seconds up the road on lap three of this Grand Prix with Kubica still in the lead at the moment. And of course, the Williams car, the sister car to George Russell wowzers absolute wowzers just look at the buildings in the background there you can see looks like a cluster of hotels or some sort of uh, apartment buildings there at argentina there's a crane there's some uh, bits of i don't know what you call it in the background they look like trees or bushes i don't know and there's the crowd there's the enormous uh, attention to detail with the crowds all those hundreds of thousands just sitting there in the grandstands absolutely superb of course uh, there wasn't really that much attendance at the Argentine Grand Prix. That's probably why it was dropped because, yes, it started to get very, very low in the attendance levels. But, of course, in 1997, there was loads of people here cheering on all the new drivers and some of them in their new teams, of course. And one of those was, of course, uh, Mr. Damon Hill, who was in the Arrows car. Yes, the Arrows car. Yeah, that one. No, not the Williams. No, no. Williams weren't good enough for Damon Hill in 97. It was arrows all the way. Oh, God. Anyway, so Robert Kubica still in the lead of this race. Gabriel Tarquini is still in 11th place at the moment. He's 16 seconds down. Now, it takes a good 20 seconds in F197 to make a pit stop. So, with our pit stop advantage, we still have a good chance of getting some serious points in this race i don't think we're going to get anywhere near winning it because unfortunately this circuit is not good for the jordan and as i said before the jordan is sort of a mid-runner car it's not one of the top running uh, cars so at the end of this season i'm not expecting to win the championship in this jordan or should i say get gabriel tarquini to win this championship i'm expecting a top six finish so if we finish anywhere in the top six i'll be very very happy indeed it's not about winning the championship it's all about the journey and how we get there. Yes, of course, uh, we did win in the last season on Formula One, but we were, of course, driving the Williams then with David Twett Coulthard. And so he had a lot better chance of uh, actually winning the championship. In this children, no, I don't think it's possible, but it is possible to have an absolutely fantastic journey to see how far we do manage to get. So, Kubica still in the lead of this Grand Prix as we go into lap 5 now. He's now 19 seconds ahead of us, Gabriel Tarquini in 11th place as we go past the pits now. Now, luckily, of course, in this game, everyone comes in for pit stops, unlike the last game, until I sorted that out, of course. But yes, everyone comes in for pit stops. Now, usually they make two pit stops around lap 7 and lap 14 is the usual pit stop procedure for all our rival cars. 
but some of the other cars only coming for one stop which is usually around lap 9 or lap 11. And yes Dave is a complete nerd when it comes to Formula 1 97 because back in the day I used to actually look out and see exactly where all the other cars pitted and so that's how I know uh, when they make their pit stops. Yes, I know I'm very very sad indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we continue on lap 5 now Gabriel Tarquini not making any inroads into Giovinazzi he's now 5 seconds down the road ahead of us so this is not looking good but uh, we're about 2 laps away now or 3 laps away from uh, the fuel weight being at its lowest which means our car will be a lot faster and we're only 2 laps away from the other cars making their stops Kibitzer in the lead Sebastian Vettel in 2nd place as you can see I did see Carmen Jordan there, I think she's in 4th or 5th in that Pros car. Now of course the Pros car was a very, very underrated car and it proved that it was a very overrated car sort of about the halfway point of the season of 1997. But unfortunately things were not to go to plan because of course Oliver's penis ended up, I think, breaking, was it one leg or was it both his legs in Canada? I can't quite remember but I'm sure that was... Uh, that was the case in 1997 and so the team sort of went into the doldrums a little bit after that because Oliver, I keep saying Oliver's penis, Oliver Panis <laughs> did very, very well in that Prost car uh, up until the point in Canada and the car was doing very, very well indeed. But unfortunately, yes, I think he broke, was it one leg or two legs? I'm not completely sure, but I know he, he did an injury to himself and that catted him out for I think the rest of the season. I can't remember if he did actually come back towards the end. I don't think he did, but he might have done. But yes, so, and then the Prost team just sort of dwindled off a little bit towards the end, which is such a shame because they were showing so much promise, so much promise in 1997. So this is the end of lap six now. George Russell's still in the lead. Hertz is in fourth place. Kubica in second. Signs in third position now. Just about to go into lap 7 now. Have any cars coming to the pits? Uh, I think the answer to that is going to be... Yes, they have. And there's a car coming out of the pits. And it's Turunga Leela. But we go past Leela. Up into ninth place now. So Turunga Leela has come in and made her first pit stop. So she's on a two-stop strategy. We're only on a one-stop, of course. But yes, we've got past Turunga Leela, unfortunately. So it doesn't look good for any points for Leela. So up into ninth place now for Gabriel Tarquini on lap 7 chasing the car ahead we can actually see the car ahead just this tiny little black blob a little bit further down the road but we're going to continue on now and hopefully see if we can make up any more positions we've got Taranga Leela now right up our Jack Jones but she is being pursued relentlessly by one of the Ferrari drivers she's got a Ferrari right up her Jack Jones wowzers absolute wowzers I don't think she's going to be able to hold off this Ferrari because of course Ferrari were very very strong in 1997 the second year with the big comeback from Michael Schumacher of course 1996 was their rebuilding year where Michael Schumacher had just joined the team but 1997 was the year when they put the hammer down and made a serious challenge towards Williams well you would have thought that but unfortunately towards the end of the 1997 that challenge was actually coming from McLaren yes McLaren because this was the uh, interim year before 1998 when they come back with all the strength in the world with their car which absolutely demolished the opposition. But in 1997 there was a, a merest glimpse of that uh, dominance happening because in the last few races McLaren really started to do very very well indeed. Unfortunately it was too late to mount any sort of serious challenge but you could see that the signs were there for the next season in 19. 98. So ninth place still for Gabrielle Tarquini and the car ahead now is Regina Hertz in the Prost car. Wow, where's Regina? Let's see if we can actually get past her because of course now we have got all the fuel weight off the car so the car is very very fast indeed and you can see that visually by how fast we've managed to catch up to the back of Regina Hertz in the Prost car. But of course, catching is one thing, passing is another. We can get right up the gearbox, but we've still got to try and get past. And of course, the cars in Formula 1 97 are very, very difficult to get past. Very, very difficult indeed. But let's see if Regina comes into the pits. 
and the answer to that is no she doesn't so we go round we try and go a little bit wide there to try and get a faster exit as we come round the corner and now we've got a run on Regina Hurts we're going to get into the slipstream we dive down the outside of Regina Hurts yes oh there's other cars coming we're up into fifth place now fifth position for Gabrielle Tarquini and the car ahead now is one of the McLarens it is Hill Race Driver Hill Race Driver in the McLaren is ahead of us now wowzers absolute wow this is now lap nine and in front of hill race driver he has got a ferrari yes a ferrari in front of him but we're still holding on now to this fifth position yes fifth place for gabrielle tarquini can we get past hill race driver before we have to make our pit stop well we will find out we're putting the hammer down now gabrielle is putting the hammer down Going underneath the faster side. Can we go and dive down the inside? Yes, he does. Oh, that's a fantastic move there for Gabriel. Oh, almost got taken out though. Almost got taken out. He goes very, very wide on the exit. But he manages to hold it together now. And he's up into fourth position. Yes, into the points, everyone. In the Jordan Peugeot car. Yes, fourth position at the moment. So one more lap and we'll have to make our pit stop as we now go down the hilly bit. Into this tight right-hander, which as I said earlier, you have to be very, very careful because if you brake too hard, you can spin out because the car actually goes light. And that's just another example of the attention to detail in Formula 1 97. So we cross the line into lap 10 now. Into lap 10. Any other cars come in? And the answer to that is no, they haven't. So I think all the cars have now been in for their pit stops. We now have the low fuel warning, as you can see, in the right-hand corner of the screen, which means it's time for us to make our pit stops. And, of course, the tyres are going to be at the end of their cliff as well because they only last 10 laps in these Grand Prix. Russell in first, Kubica in second, Sebastian Vettel in third, Gabriel Tarquini is now in fourth position. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. Now, hopefully, we're going to come in for our pit stop and we're going to uh, hit our marks and get our pit stop done. We don't want to have to go right the way around because otherwise it's going to be a disaster, absolute disaster for our championship. So into this torturous tight right-hander now we go. Yes, come on, get the car around, Gabriel. Oh, superb there. Into this chicane now, as you can see. And he's still chasing the car in front. But at the moment, we're not making much progress. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Because it's time for our one and only pit stop. We are going to be heavy on fuel, which means fuel weight is going to be added to the car once again as we go out for our final 10 laps. So into the pits we go. Very, very torturous uh, pit entrance here, as a lot of the uh, entrances were in Formula 1 97. So onwards we go now. We're going to put in uh, 10 or 11 laps of fuel just to make sure that we don't run out. Slick tyres. Oh, we need a new front wing as well because we've damaged it. So, oh, yes, that's right. We had a collision on that one, didn't we? So out we go as a 7.2 second stop, pretty average for 1997 standards, but not too bad, not too bad. And we rejoin now, oh I think a car went past us there, I think a car went past us. We'll find out in a minute where we are, oh there's one of the pros trying to sneak down inside as we rejoin the field now. This is now lap 11, just 10 more laps to go and where is Gabriel Tarquini in this race you can see the stickers on the tyres to denote that they are brand new brand new soft tyres and we're in sixth place so we are still in the world championship points everyone fantastic for Gabriel Tarquini he's still on for one single solitary world championship point and behind him that car trying to get past him earlier the Prost was Carmen Jolda Carmen bloody Jolda unbelievable unbelievable Anyway, George Russell is still in the lead at the moment. He's now 28 seconds in the lead. And, of course, that almighty Williams of 1997. As we see those bushes pop out in front of us from absolutely nowhere. Yes, they just pop out from nowhere, those bushes. You've got to be careful of bushes that just pop out in front of you. Yes. But <laughs> OK, let's, let's move on now. Let's move on. Oh, my goodness. Is it starting to rain? I thought I saw rain. Oh, no, no, my mistake. But it's getting very, very cloudy, though, as you can see in the background. Very, very cloudy indeed. But it's not quite dark enough for any rain. It goes really black and dark when it's about to rain. Really black and dark. But it is getting very, very cloudy out here now at the uh, Argentine Grand Prix from Buenos Aires. Ricardo's now in fourth place. Fowzers, fourth position for Daniel Ricardo, the honey badger, as those trees in the background pop into view once again. It sort of reminds me of Colin McRae, the first Colin McRae. Do you remember that? Oh my goodness, that gave you a brilliant example of uh, things popping out in front of you. It was like driving through a tunnel, it really was, and everything was just sort of slowly coming into view. It was fantastic. It was like a hand grenade going off in reverse, yes. <laughs> Wowzers. 
thankfully with all the latest technology and the fact that we've now got PlayStation 4s and what have you and Xbox thingies uh, thankfully we haven't got a situation where there's any pop-up anymore no because uh, the draw distances are really really good in the latest games uh, of course in the old days you had, had little tricks to get past it if anyone remembers Silent Hill the game for the PS1 yes they used a special effect called fog <laughs> yes basically it was just a lot of old fog in the in the distance so that uh, that could eliminate the fact that there was a very very little draw distance in the game I must admit, I did like Silent Hill. I might start playing that again. I've actually still got it. Yes, it was a very, very good game indeed. Sort of a rival to Resident Evil. I played Resident Evil as well, and that was pretty, pretty darn special. But I sort of lost it after about Resident Evil 2, in fact. Yes, I really couldn't be bothered after that. So, But Silent Hill was very... Oh, and Gabriel Tarquini goes wide. And uh, his teammate, of course, Tarunga Leela, tries for a move down inside. But she was very, very cautious there. Not to try and uh, a stupid move and get past Gabriel Tequini because, of course, they are teammates. So that was very, very good driving from Tarangalida there. And Gabriel Tarquini, of course, is in the points at the moment and Tarangalida isn't. So, yes, that was superb driving from Lida there. Just not going too mad trying to get past uh, our driver of choice at the moment, which is Gabriel Tarquini. So, yes, as I say, uh, Silent Hill, which is a very good game. I think I might start playing that because I've, I've now got the urge. I've now got the urge. Yes, this is what happens today. He suddenly gets the urge for things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it used fogging so you couldn't uh, find out that if they took the fog away, the draw's distance on the game was absolutely horrendous. Absolutely horrendous, yes. So there you go. So we're still in sixth place now and still being chased by our teammate, Turangalila. Turangalila, of course, she can be seen in... Uh, many, many episodes of Future Armour, yes, which is repeated many, many times on Sky. Sky 1, and I think Pick shows it as well. In, if you're in the UK, of course, if you're watching this in any other country, you'll be going, what the hell is he talking about? What the hell is he even talking about? Yes. But yes, in the UK, we've got Sky. Sky 1 shows Future Armour sometimes, early in the mornings. I don't know if they are at the moment, but they used to. And Pick TV shows it, and I think there's... there's there's quite a few other channels that show Future Armour as well. I can't remember, but yeah, there's probably a few. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer with us. No, which is a damn shame. A damn shame because it's a very, very good show that I enjoyed immensely, especially Bender. Yes, mostly for the name, but there you go. <laughs> let's move on, Dave. Let's move on. And as you can see, Gabriel Tarquini in sixth place is now being relentlessly pursued on lap 14. By Oh, it goes wide. It goes wide. Steady, Gabriel. Steady. He's okay, but he's got a complete trolley train of cars behind him. And one of those is Leela. And she's really, really, really trying to get past because she's got a Ferrari right up her derby. As you can see, she's got a Ferrari right up her derby. Uh, got a trolley train of cars behind uh, Gabrielle Tarquin at the moment on lap 14 with Kubica still in the lead. And George Russell in second. Sebastian Vettel in third position now. Wowzers. And now you can see in the background it's getting very, very dark indeed, which means it could rain. But fortunately now with only uh, six or seven laps to go, it's not going to affect our race and we shouldn't have to come in. As you can see though, the Ferrari has now got past to Rungalina. There's a car coming out of the pits. That was very, very close there. It was one of the Benettons. And oh, he goes wide and he gets taken by two positions there. Oh no. Is he out of the points? Is he out of the points now, Gabriel Tarquini? I'm not quite sure. He was trying to... Oh, no! And now we've got the McLaren going past as well. I think that was the hill race driver. Wowzers. Yes, he's down to seven feet out of the World Championship points. It's going from bad to worse now for Gabriel Tarquini on lap 15. And another car goes past. Oh, my goodness. What is going on? He's losing places all over the show. But he manages to retake the position from the Prost. I think that's possibly Regina Hertz in the Prost car. Now he's going to try and go down the inside of hill race driver in the McLaren. This could get very, very dodgy. He backed out of that manoeuvre superbly, superbly there for Gabriel Tarquini on that 15. It's now getting very, very overcast. Very, very overcast indeed. But thankfully, even if it rains now, we won't have to come in. No, there's not enough laps left to uh, for the race to affect us because it takes a good three or four laps for the rain to come down and we have to come in. So even if it starts now, we will still be golden to the end. And there's cars coming into the pits, as you can see. Wow, the reason why they got past Gabriel is because they were just about to come in for their pit stop, which means their fuel weight was absolutely zero. That's why they managed to get past Gabriel. So he goes past the pits. Of course, Gabriel hasn't got to come in again. And he retakes now full position, which he had earlier. Wow, fantastic. So he's still in the points on lap 16. 
for Gabriel Tarquini and of course the Jordan Peugeot. Just look at the background now. Just look how dark and overcast it is. This was a fantastic addition. Oh no, no, no. Gabriel holding together here. Oh, that's car trying to get past though. Car trying to get past. But yes, the overcast skies and the way it went black was a fantastic addition to Formula 197. And it really added another layer of authenticity. Oh look, now the background has gone fully dark, which means it is going to start raining. Well, you say that, but sometimes it doesn't. Very, very rarely, but sometimes it doesn't start raining. Because that is how realistic the weather effects are in Formula 197. So this is lap 16. Sebastian Vettel is the car ahead of us, but he's 21 seconds up the road. 21 seconds. I think actually he's in second place. So I think that's uh, what that was there. And Kubica's still in the lead. Russell in second place, six seconds behind Robert Kubica. So Kubica doing a very, very good job there, of course, in the Williams car. And now we just... Is it raining? Is it raining? I thought I saw some raindrops. Someone tell me if they can see rain. No, there's no rain at the moment. Okay, into lap 17 now. Lap 17. Kubitz has just done a fastest lap of a 117.159. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. Just four laps remaining now of this Grand Prix. Kubica in the lead. Russell in second. Sebastian Vettel in third. Gabriel Tarquini in fourth. Ricardo in fifth. And Hill Race Driver is currently in Six position, yes, six position now for Hill Race Driver. So the question is, is it going to rain? And Sebastian Vettel is in third, and we're almost 10 seconds behind Sebastian Vettel now. We've got no chance of catching Sebastian, unfortunately, because he's in the Ferrari, and we are not going to make any inroads because all the pit stops have been accounted for. We're not going to stop. And neither are our competitors. Now, of course, on lap 17, the fuel weight will be at its lowest. So the car is going to be very, very fast indeed. Very, very fast. And unfortunately, I think this is going to be our finishing position. Fourth place for Gabriel Tarquin. It's about to start lap 18. Russell still in the lead. Kibitza still in second place. As we're just about to cross the line now, with just three laps remaining, Gabriel Tarquini still in fourth position now yes fourth place wait 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 what's this i think a car's just coming to the pits i think a car has just come into the pits because gabriel's just got into third position now well that was a very very late pit stop for whoever came in i don't know who it was but maybe they had a problem with their car i'm not quite sure but the car was coming to the pits which means gabriel tarquini is now into a podium position this is absolutely fantastic news at the circuit that he doesn't like and he wasn't expecting to do very well indeed wowzers yes third position now oh my goodness and unfortunately it has just started to rain as you can see there are raindrops just coming down but now with just a few more laps to go it isn't going to affect us and we won't have to come into the pits hopefully hopefully wowzers well real excitement towards the end of the race we have made it up into a podium position more points for our jordan peugeot car on lap 18 we're just about to come down the hill a bit now. Oh dear, it's very, very torturous. And of course, it is now trying to get very, very slippery. So we've got to be very, very careful because these slick tyres are absolutely useless in 1997 in the wet conditions. We just go around the corner now and start lap 90. It's a very, very short circuit, of course, at the Argentine Grand Prix. Not very uh, long in a circuit length. And we cross the line to lap 19 now. Just two laps remaining. Tarquini holding on to third behind George Russell in the Williams. Yes, the Williams. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. In fact, as the cars are going round, I'm going to try and see if I can see exactly how long the circuit is in Argentina. Because I have still got the book in front of me. Yes, the Formula 1 97 manual, which was, oh my good, it was absolutely brilliant. Had lots of stuff in it, all in full colour as well. You don't get that these days, especially if you just download a game. You don't get a bloody thing, do you? No, absolutely nothing. Anyway, let's have a look and see if we can see the circuit length. Here it is. Yes, as I say, it's only 2.687 miles in length at Argentina. 72 laps is the full race distance, of course. And uh, the winner in 1997 was Jack Villeneuve with a one uh 52 one hour 52 is that one hour 52 minutes i think it is i think it may be or was that one minute i'm not quite sure anyway eddie irvine came in second place with ralph schumacher in the jaw 
Ralph Schumacher in the Jordan Peugeot in Buenos Aires in 1997 finished in third place and oh my goodness art is mirroring art because our driver Gabriel Tarquini is going to finish in third place oh my oh my it may be time to play the Twilight Zone music or even the X-Files how is this possible how is this possible but it is yes just in real life the Jordan Peugeot at Argentina Argentina <laughs> Argentina is going to finish as a new country I've just invented yes Argentina <laughs> I'm sure Regina would like to live there yes <laughs> sounds just like her anyway as you can see now the Ferrari is right up the gearbox this is the last lap of the race Yes, that was race time. One hour and 52 minutes. Yes, one hour and 52 minutes. I'll just work that out now. And pole position in 97 went to uh, Jack Vilner with one minute and 24 seconds with a speed of 112.786 miles an hour. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. So as you can see, we are going to cross the line just like in the real season in 1997 spooky 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 but yes we're gonna cross the line in third place fantastic and the rain didn't come down any harder which was great news look at all those cars ahead of us though we cross the line in third place yes gabriel get in there fantastic absolutely fantastic so here's the final scores on the doors then kubica won the race george russell in second gabriel tarquini in third sebastian vettel in fourth daniel ricardo in fifth and taranga lila oh, oh, oh my god taranga lila finished in sixth place one world championship point fantastic i shall leave lila now to work out all the points for me because she's now the official spokesperson spokeswoman i should say for this series and after three rounds now gabriel tarquini is in fifth place with eight world championship points George Russell is currently in the lead. Oh my goodness. Oh my bloody goodness. Anyway, I will leave you with more music from F197. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. There will, of course, be more later.